Since the 1960s, Star Trek has shown the future of humanity as a bright and hopeful one. This includes in the way they show daily tasks, such as making food. Replicators used on ships like the Enterprise instantly deliver meals upon request, free of charge. While often shown in the background, the topic of food is rarely directly touched on as much as it is in Star Trek The Next Generation's episode, Family. When Captain Jean-Luc Picard chooses to visit his hometown in France, conflict quickly arises due to the new futuristic ideas Jean-Luc represents and the old-fashioned traditions of his brother, Robert. Over a warm and welcoming family dinner, a conversation between the two brothers immediately highlights this tension. A glass of earth wine is poured for each family member, and they taste. This is the 46. 47. You've been drinking too much of that artificial stuff. Spoiled you. Ruined your palate. Picard disagrees, claiming that after drinking the artificial stuff for so long, his appreciation for the real drink has been heightened. Robert ignores this to instead compliment his wife's cooking. He repeatedly states his belief that cooking is becoming a lost art due to technology. His wife, however, represents a different opinion. She makes her thoughts clear. She would enjoy the convenience every now and then. Robert represents tradition and belief that the old ways are better for humanity. Jean-Luc, the voice with final say in this episode, can have his opinion summed up in one quote. I was proud that my family were helping to preserve the traditions. I just didn't feel bound by those traditions. There should be room for both in this life. While this is the stance that the episode itself ends up agreeing with, it exists in the context of an idealized world. Star Trek is the utopian future many of us hope for, but without the complexities of the real world, we're left to wonder if John Luke's ideas will hold up under scrutiny. Plants and animals are obviously our current main source of food, however replacing one of these two is actually plausible right now and likely even coming in the near future. We could begin moving away from practices like pumping animals full of antibiotics or providing the bare minimum when it comes to suitable living conditions. On top of the unethical way we're already treating animals, there's an increasing demand for meat alongside it. In America, meat is at the center of so many of our meals. Bacon and sausage for breakfast, hot dogs on the grill, steaks for dinner, chicken and burgers at our fast food places, and that list is only a very small glimpse into many of the common meals that most of us here eat. Because we still need to eat, and we continue to choose meat, Companies will see no reason to change the most profitable form of meat making, with ethics being low on the priority list. However, there may be an alternative. Once fully developed, it is predicted that IVM will allow for the large-scale culturing of stem cells into animal meat, alleviating almost all of the harms associated with the rearing of farm animals. IVM, or in vitro meat, or lab-grown meat, is being presented as a solution to many of the problems affecting animals. With demands for meat only rising, expected to go up 73% between 2010 and 2050, finding a solution is critical. Otherwise, we risk harming animals even more and ourselves in the process. A vegan or vegetarian diet is a valuable option to present instead of lab-grown meat. However, there are barriers to changing the entire world's diet, some more valid than others. Whether the reasons for continuing to eat meat are valid or not, they still exist, and there's only so much pointing at a problem without taking action afterwards can do. Two animal advocates, 
arguably those with the greatest opposition to conventional animal meat, IVM is still seen as less preferable than the vegan diets. However, many endorse IVM due to perceived barriers to the widespread adoption of a vegan diet. Animals will be greatly affected by a change as big as a shift in the entire world's diet. A lot of us might start to wonder what will happen to these sources if we no longer need them and have replaced livestock in the fields they inhabit with these futuristic artificial sources. Right now, we can guess that a population decline for livestock would be inevitable, even having the potential to put some species at risk for extinction. However, we might also see a change in the way that companies and large farms house and treat their animals. And based on previously stated information, this change could be for the better. If the people at the top of these companies have our best interests at heart. Since we're becoming more aware of the unethical state of our current system, we're becoming more and more open to alternatives. A study done in 2015 surveyed various opinions commented under articles related to in vitro meat. One of these commenters said, It's healthy? Pure meat grown with practically zero environmental impact and no ethical problems. And without those limitations, there's no longer any excuse for food insecurity anywhere on the planet. There seem to be many strong opinions in support of a change to using in vitro meat. These range from enthusiastic certainty that this will lead to a positive change, environmental benefits, health benefits, even potentially more equality regarding food access. Meanwhile, others seem only cautiously optimistic, not to mention the opinions of those completely opposed should not be ignored either. This technology is not going to be used to send hamburger meat to Laos. Sorry, look at the resources of the US. Look at their funding priorities. It is a test tube experiment. Rich people will eat real organic grass-fed beef. They will slip this into the food of the poor and our pets and farm animals' diets. Concerns that this technology could be used in nefarious ways is not unwarranted. There is reason to want to remain in control of what we put in our bodies, and the idea that a company could come along and disrupt the entire current system is terrifying to people. This idea becomes even scarier when we begin to imagine potential unknown health risks that could affect the entire population. While not food related, lead paint is one of the biggest examples of a product that was widely distributed and caused irreversible harm. Poor and marginalized communities are almost always the ones most at risk. Money buys choices after all. The good news is, while there are still many unknowns we should consider, there's reason to believe that there could be benefits to our health as well when compared to our current system. This indiscriminate use of antibiotics is leading to antibiotic resistance among the animals that have severe consequences for humanity. This means lab-grown meat may be able to avoid many of those risks. Right now, the best decision that could be made based on what we know is cautious awareness of how lab-grown meat might affect your body. Find sources directly from those studying it. Avoid companies making grand, unsupported promises. Check bias. And if you're in a position to, pay attention to what you're putting into your body. That's all we as individuals can do for our health right now. Another aspect that affects human and animal life combined is the environmental impact. The current system of raising livestock contributes about 15% to the global total of greenhouse gas emissions. For lack of a better explanation, cow farts are a big problem. Livestock production has a substantial environmental footprint. Deforestation, land degradation, soil erosion, water pollution, biodiversity loss, and similar damages are associated with cattle ranching. That means, in theory, that something like in vitro meat should be able to solve this problem. However, even in this case, we should be cautious. 
While results studying emissions seem mixed for now, there is potential for in vitro meat to cause less environmental damage. If scientists are allowed to take charge on how this research is used and protecting life is given the priority, then we may see those benefits one day. There are many intricate issues surrounding the production and impacts of artificial food. These complexities were not all included in one episode of Star Trek, but the show still helps begin this conversation. While Jean-Luc's simpler view of progress always being good makes sense when telling a hopeful story about an idealized future, we have to consider the tangible impacts in real life. Lowering animal cruelty is considered one of the reasons to even try. Human safety would be considered a priority in a world like Star Trek, where life, no matter what species, is valued. However, companies are not people. They will continue to put profit first. What we ultimately decide must be the safest for all of us and the planet we live on. There is an urgency to this choice as it affects the future of humanity. If we are able to make the right one, if science is allowed to prevail over corporate greed, then we may see a future as hopeful as the one presented in Star Trek.